Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Uh, today I'm going to be going over five of my favorite mid-level money makers. Now these are going to be between the levels of 50 and 70, something like that. I no specific boundary, but I'm not going to be including things like Zora, uh, Raids, or High Level Slayer, nothing like that. Just kind of reasonably achievable money makers that won't take you hundreds and hundreds of hours to achieve. Here are my stats right now. Most of them aren't super high, although my mage and range are a bit later. So to start off at number one, uh, something I've been doing a lot lately is actually killing the deranged archaeologist. Uh, it's a new boss that uh, got released with Fossil Island. Uh, it's not super hard to kill. You don't really need high stats, but you'd probably require 60 to 70 magic. 75 would be ideal for having a trident, but you could probably kill it with Ivan's Blast as well. I just have some basic magic gear. I mean, I do have the Tormented Bracelet, uh, which I probably should get Eternal Boots. Anyway, don't kill me. But honestly, you just max out as much magic as you can get with your gear, and it'll most likely be enough. Now, the quickest way to get there is just with a dig site pendant. Otherwise, you'll have to take the fossil barge, uh, which is a little bit more out of the way. But you're just going to go right to Fossil Island, and once you have unlocked the mushroom teleportation method, you can get there very quickly. Now, for my inventory, I'm just bringing some food. I'm just going to do four prayer potions worth of kills so you can kind of see the loot. Uh, you'll need an axe, and a stamina potion, and a anti-poison. Once you're at the magic tree, you're going to need to go to the sticky swamp. Uh, if you want to look at a couple other methods to get here, I will leave a link in the video for how I got here originally, and if you don't actually have the pendant. So from here, you just need to run down, and you're going to need to chop through these uh, tendril vines here. Uh, there is a annoying thing here, but it's not that big a deal. Once you get through, you won't have to deal with them anymore. Run a little bit south, and you can see them just right here. Okay, I'm getting extremely lucky. I've only killed them five times I got two onyx bolt tip drops in a row I cc'd at one point uh, but I got another one and uh, then we got just a rune two-hander so I will show you what I got from a hundred kills because it's a little more uh, important because just a random sample size of five kills isn't that important but anyway just okay this is a bad example I ran the wrong way uh, <laughs> but as far as how to kill him he's very simple he's just like the other crazy archaeologist uh, you just put on protect from range and essentially you just have to wait for him to say uh, learn to read and then you have to dodge the books. I find the easiest if you just stay here in the middle because uh, then you have more room to juke around and once the books hit the ground there will be another explosion and then once that's done you just run back into the middle. Uh, he spawns up here so it's very easy to just get him right here and then you just wait for him to say it and you dodge any direction it doesn't really matter. Uh, but sometimes he'll huck you a curveball and the books will kind of go in a ram direction. Uh, but that's why he brings some food, just in case he takes some damage. Uh, but his drop table is very good, I think. Anyway, he drops a lot of rune items. Uh, sometimes, obviously, onyx bolt tips. And a lot of alcohols like runette limbs. And uh, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I'll put the uh, loot from uh, 100 skills on screen. Uh, but here is my loot just from, uh, I guess, like 6 kills. Very good and extremely lucky. Actually, I think this is 7 kills, but 170k. Uh, so this usually comes in at about 400 or 500k an hour once you take off the cost of supplies. And uh, coming in at number 4 is collecting Mortmire Fungus. This can be done at a very low level and uh, has better methods available once you get to a higher level. Uh, what I'm going to be using today, you're going to require 50 construction. Ideally, you'd have the hard Mortania Diary done, but you really don't need that. Uh, you will need to do uh, Nature Spirit and Priest and Peril. And if you don't have access to your home, you'll need to have completed Fairy Tales Part 2 to have access to the Fairy Rings. But I find this method a little bit quicker, and uh, I just kind of prefer it. So what you're going to start off by doing is just teleporting uh, to your house. Uh, now from here, you're going to have to have installed a Kirill Teleport, uh, which will require 50 construction. And uh, now I just chucked it up here, because why not? Now, uh, you will need to go bank pretty frequently with this, but from now we're just going to head to the Mortmire area. So, I just run, because it's very close from the Krill Teleport. And having Graceful is obviously going to be helpful, but you can just use Stamina Potions and you'll be good to go. Okay, just going to come down to this gate. There is a selection you can make it so it never pops up with a stupid message again. And from here, you're just going to cast Bloom. I just do it on these two logs, because it's very close. And honestly, uh, with the Hard Diary, you don't really need the Triple Log. Unless you have an extremely low prayer level, which is not very common. Okay, once you have a full inventory, you just pop a house teleport tab. If you need prayer, you can run up to an altar if you have it in your house. Otherwise, I just run back to the Krill portal, just because why not? It's right close to a bank. 
and you're already in the area you need to be, you bank it, and you're done. With this method, uh, you can get anywhere between 1,000 and 1,100 more Mire Fungus an hour. Uh, the current price is 650, you're looking at about 700k an hour, uh, minus a little bit for house teleport tabs. Now coming in at number three is actually making unfinished potions. Now this has been one of my favorites for quite a while. It's easy to do, doesn't have a high herbal requirement, um, but it does vary based on what potion you're doing. Right now I'm doing Avanto, which I believe is 50 maybe? Let's see. Oh, do I even have enough? Okay, I'm pretty sure it's 53 or something. Anyway, all you have to do is buy uh, cleaned herbs off the Grand Exchange with water, and uh, you combine them into the unfinished potion for often a 100 to 200 GP margin. I checked it right now, it looks like Avanto has a 200 GP margin. As we can see here, uh, Avanto's, you could buy them for 24.51 and sell the unfinished potion for 26.54. Now, uh, another easy way to look up these things is actually on G Tracker. They have an unfinished potion calculator. Very handy if you happen to have uh, G Tracker Premium. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, they are a sponsor of mine. There will be a link in the description for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine these 500 herbs and we'll see how long it takes. I'm guessing about 15 minutes, but we'll see. Okay, so we ended up combining all the potions and we sold them off for uh, pretty much just 100k profit. And now it only took about 15 minutes, so that's about 400k an hour. Now the only reason I'm putting this this far up here is pretty consistently you can get uh, 700-800k an hour, even more. In the video I originally made ages ago, I got 1.3 mil. And it really just depends on the price of the herbs and the margin between the unfinished potion and the herb. Uh, it varies so much that there isn't really a fixed money per hour, but it can get very high up there and it's a very easy method and really has a very low requirement because 56 herb lore really doesn't take that long. Herb lore levels go by very quick, a little pricey, but really not that big a deal and you can really stand to make a ton of money uh, combining unfinished potions. Coming in at number two is creating saplings out of seeds. Now this is a very easy method to do and you only need a certain amount of farming level all you need is the ability to plant a regular seed so it's either going to be fruit trees or regular trees uh, so once you have 50 farming or something like that uh, you can do quite a few of these so what I have right now are uh, willow seeds These can be done at level 30 I believe uh, we just bought 100 of them really quickly just so I can show you how it's done uh, so all you need is a gardening trowel uh, you need your seeds and some filled plant pots, which you can buy off the Grand Exchange or from a gardening shop. Uh, at this point, you just need to pretty much click them together. Uh, there's kind of some debates on what's the most efficient way to do this, but uh, some people say if you double click, it's better, uh, which might be true, I don't know. But either way, it's really not that time consuming of a process. Once you fill up those plants, you just go back, withdraw more, and repeat until you have filled all of the pots. Okay, so we filled up all the pots, and now this is where Lunars comes in handy. Uh, if you don't have Lunars, it's not that big a deal. You'll have to fill it up with a watering can by hand, but if you do have Lunars, get your Steam Battle Staff and withdraw some Astral Runes, and you can do this in probably 10 seconds, pretty much. All you do is withdraw them all, hit the Humidify spell, there you go, done. They have all been watered, withdraw more, and you can do these 26 at a time, I guess. Uh, really quick to do and they're really inexpensive. The Astral Runes really aren't that much. So we pretty much just have to do four inventories and then we will be done. There's the last one and we're done. We've done the whole process of turning seeds into saplings. Now all you have to do is wait about five minutes for them to mature and then you just sell them back. So when I was doing that, I was just doing it live. So you can see exactly how long it took me to do it. It took like three minutes honestly to do a hundred of these. If you have the Lunars, otherwise it takes like twice as long or a little bit less even uh, so the time mainly here is waiting for items to sell as well as waiting for the saplings to mature but really if you have a bunch of seeds lined up that's not even that big a deal because you just move on to the next seed while the other one matures anyway uh, we're selling these for 839 and we bought them for 760 uh, for generous and said that took 
five minutes. That means that we can multiply it by 12 and get about 1 mil an hour just for this item. Now if you do it with more expensive seeds, it works out to even higher uh, profit per hour. You do need a little bit of planning as the limit on the seeds are only 200. So you either have to wait a bit in advance or buy a diverse group of seeds. If it wasn't for that, I would probably put it at number one. But uh, because of that, I'm just going to toss it at number two. Okay, guys, and coming in at number one is my favorite method, which is Barrows. It's kind of the uh, iconic mid-level money-making method. You can do it at like 50 or 60 magic, but the higher level you go, the more profitable it gets. Uh, so currently, I have a pretty decently high magic level for it. At this point, I'm not going to be getting much quicker runs beyond getting better at it and possibly getting a few pieces of better gear. Uh, but unfortunately, just because I don't want to make this video in super long, it's not going to be an in-depth guide to Barrows. I will leave one link in the description because I made one a couple months ago. Uh, but here's the gist of it. For one, you just want uh, a Trident, essentially. A Trident or Ivan's Blast or some cost-efficient spell. Uh, on top of that, you're going to want any magic boosting equipment like the Occult Necklace or the Tormented Bracelet that physically will increase your max hit. But as far as magical accuracy or anything else is concerned, you don't want it. You're just going to wear your best defensive gear as well as bringing a range switch. Uh, now I'm just going to teleport there. Now I'm just going to highly recommend using Barrow's tabs. It's 2 or 3k per tab, but so much quicker, so much easier, and it's just more cost efficient, I believe. Uh, so the money per hour here ranges from... 500k to 1 mil an hour. Now this depends on a couple different factors. The biggest one is if you have completed the Mortania Hard Diaries. Uh, if you have, then it will pretty much boost your money per hour by about 200-300k just based on the rune drops uh, which make up the bulk of your consistent profit. Uh, of course you want to get lucky and get items, but the rune drops are going to be what gets you uh, most of your money to be honest. In an hour, you're going to get maybe 300 to 400k worth of uh, barrels equipment on average and 600k worth of rune drops. So it's pretty important to get that, but it's not necessary at all. Without it, you could probably get upwards of 700k an hour with average luck, uh, but with the diaries, you're looking at more like a mil. Okay, so a couple extra tips I could throw in here is you always want to keep moving. Now, the way I do uh, the barrows is I do it in a clockwise fashion. So I'll go from Duroc, clockways around the center, and then eventually do a rims last. I do it because I feel like it's the most efficient running route. I don't really base it too much off of what the brothers do, except I always want to do Duroc first. Because if you get stuck doing Duroc and you don't have prayer, you're going to not have a very good time. Uh, so speaking of that, that's why I bring one prayer potion to the tunnel. Since we'll be restoring our prayer every time at the dual arena. Um, it's best just to bring one prayer potion in case you get stuck with the rock in the tunnel because you will need prayer for him unlike any of the other brothers. Whoops, need to switch here. Um, none of these want to get a reasonable high mage or range or any problem at all. But of course, if you're kind of a mid-level or lower level, uh, you will need to be paying attention to your prayer and making sure that uh, you aren't tanking the brothers too much. Now one other thing I could have brought and I should mention is a salve amulet. I do actually have it, I just oftentimes forget it. The only thing it's really going to help you with is getting the kill count in the tunnel. But since that is a fairly large portion of the Barrow's run, it's definitely worth bringing. You just switch to it when you're underground with your blowpipe. Speaking of which, using the blowpipe to get the kill count, while it does cost more money, it is drastically quicker. So I would highly recommend uh, getting the kill count with the blowpipe. Because uh, otherwise you will be taking quite a bit longer with a Dragon Sim or a Blowpipe or something like that. So you always want to be moving through the tunnel. Uh, you will need to be moving through to get exactly three skeleton kills. Because those will get you the perfect amount of percentage to max out your reward. At least from a GP standpoint. Uh, getting 88% and that is exactly what three skeletons gives you. Uh, will give you the max amount of runes uh, which is what you're looking for. Uh, so you just need to kind of memorize the puzzle. It just go look it up in the wiki. It it, it takes a little while, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, we switch back to our melee gear here, and we're gonna kill the rock, which I believe is in this chest. So yeah, obviously that was just a ridiculously bare bones guide to barrows. 
uh, just might decide to do a run just to see what I got for the video. But yeah, but one mil an hour, if you uh, have all the requirements for the diaries and whatnot done, in about 750k if you don't. So maybe I'll get something extremely good just for this one chest. And what do you know? Nothing. But while I'm at it here, I will put a uh, one hour loot on screen just so you guys can see uh, what you can expect. But I mean, that wasn't the greatest rune drop, but it's still blood runes, still chaos runes, still about a 50k run, which is pretty average. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my top five mid-level money making guides. Hopefully you learned something. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to toss a like. If you didn't, you're going to dislike it anyway, so I don't need to say anything. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.